Welcome YouTube to my review of a 2015 Nissan GTR. Now if you guys stay tuned, I'm also going to be doing a build log of this car, taking it from stock to an incremental upgrades to an Alpha 7 and then eventually an Alpha 9 and along the way I'm going to try and document as accurately as I possibly can the incremental upgrades of each part and kind of get some real world um, performance figures and not just dyno numbers because dyno numbers are a great metric but it all comes down to whether or not you can put that newfound power down to the ground and how your car handles it with that and so it's kind of like a, a cumulative effort of the car so I'm going to try and get uh, 0 to 30, 0 to 60s and uh, a multitude of other metrics to try and quantify each upgrade's benefit to the car. Now, with that being said, let's review the car in its stock form. Now, this is my personal GTR. Now, I also cross-shopped it with a Corvette Z06 and a Audi R8. Now, both of the other cars are amazing cars, um, but they just turned out to not be the platforms for my wants and desires. The GTR is, by my account, the best bang for the buck performance car that money can buy. I mean, for the price of one Audi R8 V10 plus, you can buy two premium Nissan GTRs. That's just kind of mind blowing. Not to hate on those platform, that platform, it's an amazing, the Audi R8 is an amazing vehicle, but it just wasn't for me. The Nissan GTR offered me the chance to tune my car again, which was something that I had missed with my Lexus ISF, and I wanted to kind of get back into it, and the GTR is one of the most tuner-friendly cars that you can find on, on a showroom floor today. Um, not saying that you can't tune an Audi R8, but it's more like you ship it off to underground performance and then they ship it back to you and it's making 1500 horsepower. I'm sure that's a lot of fun, but it removes the, the aspect that I like of working on my own car. So that's why I'm going to do uh, kind of a DIY when I upgrade my car. Now let's talk the negatives of this car. One of the negatives of this car is it is a very polarizing car. So you have fanboys and people that absolutely love it. And then you have people that just hate the fact that it has fanboys and that people are so in love with it. So they take the other end of the spectrum and that's fine. And it makes for a very, it's always a conversation starter whenever I pull up pretty much anywhere. Um, but that's kind of what you kind of set yourself up for no matter what car you have. Every car has, has that thing. But um, one of the, my biggest gripes is when people who have never driven a GTR make the statement, um, 
it's like driving a computer or a PlayStation. The car practically drives itself. And that's not true at all. That's one of the farthest things from the truth that um, you would know if you actually drive a GTR. Now, one of the other negatives of this car is one of the bolts on the bell housing rattles every single time you go from a stop as you excel as you begin to accelerate you hear this chattering that sounds like a old saturn trying to keep itself together as it's accelerating and it's like kuh, 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 and you're like why um that's annoying the uh, another nuisance of this car um and some people say oh well it's a sports car it, just get used to it but so are Porsches and they don't have this issue. The wind noise in this car is very, very annoying. And for like five pounds of extra sound deadener to put on the roof of the car, it would have taken a 3,900 pound car and turned it into 3,905 pounds. And it would have been, I think pleasurable to have that done because you could then enjoy the engine note of the turbo spooling and your exhaust as you're revving through without having this ungodly amount of wind noise um so the last negative i'll talk about are the brakes now it's kind of a negative and a positive the brakes on this car are absolutely phenomenal for the road course on city roads in inclement weather like after the beginning of a rain when all the oils are coming up and it's a little bit slick out if you get a little too squirrely on that brake pedal the car gets very unsettled and will kind of dance around the lane and that is kind of unsettling um, it definitely requires constant attention, even on long distance drives, the GTR begs for you to pay attention to it. And it's a very engaging car, so it makes the long drive more fun, but it can also make it more mentally fatiguing because it is requiring so much constant engagement. However, those two factors play into... A lot of the pros of this car so this car is out of all the cars that I've had the pleasure of driving the most driver feedback oriented car that I've ever driven and was a huge reason why I ended up purchasing this car uh, the steering is precise you point it where you want to go and the car just absolutely loves to dive into the turn and just shoot you out of the corner and it's amazing the brakes are awesome on the track they just bite and there's very little brake fade uh i was doing five lap increments and i never had a problem with my brakes boiling or having brake fade it was just consistent accurate brake pedal feel and was just amazing now the one thing the gtr is known for and kind of goes without saying is the ungodly otherworldly acceleration from zero to as long as you want to keep your foot down this car just shreds asphalt it is awesome and is so much fun and i love getting people in my car and showing them what zero to 60 on a road in three seconds feels like and they always have a smile on their face and it's amazing uh this car definitely definitely is an enjoyable car to own now uh i've owned a 3000 GT VR4, a Pontiac GTO, and a Lexus ISF, and now this GTR, and this is my favorite car to, to drive, 
my favorite car that I've owned could is a toss up between the GTR and the ISF, but the ISF was like a comfortable cruiser grand tourer. This is more performance oriented and uh, lets me tinker. Uh, a small little story five years ago uh, in Las Vegas at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, I drove a Ferrari 458, a Lamborghini Gallardo, and a Nissan GTR. I did five laps in each car around the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And if at the end of the day you could, would have told me that I could have taken any one of the three cars that I'd driven home for free, I would have picked the Nissan GTR. So with that being said, stay tuned. Every Saturday I'm going to be releasing a new review video or a build log. And thanks for watching.